Thanks, Claire. Um, is, is the presentation up? Can you see it? Not yet, Pedro. No? I oh. can put it up if you need it. Yeah, maybe, maybe because I don't think mine is working, so. Okay. Hang on. Uh, are you trying to share the screen at the moment? No. I'm not. It seems to have, uh, I could work it earlier and now it's not working. Hang on one second. Yes. It's coming up saying host disabled screen sharing, but I don't know how that's managing itself. Huh? Here we go. No. Yeah. Which is? Sorry. For some reason, it's coming up as that the host has disabled screen sharing. Do you, want me to, do you want me to try again, Claire? Yeah, try again. But if not, I will um I'll unmake you the host for a second. Okay, give it a go. Any success? Not yet. <laughs> Pedro, you should be host now. You are the main man. You should yeah, be I've made him host. Well, I, I, I did what I usually do on the other platforms and you should, you should be seeing it unless there's another technical issue that I'm not aware of, so. For, if you make me the host, I'll share it from mine because, oh no, now it's working, ta-da. Oh, you got it? Yay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so hello everyone. Um, so my name, my name is Pedro Vieira and I, I, I work for Spurão. Uh, I'm responsible to manage uh, certain markets around North America, but also Europe, which obviously includes the UK. So um, we, we've been working for quite a long time with, with, with Scotland and with Great Grog. We're very thankful for everything that uh, you guys have done for us. You've been a great supporter of our wines, but also as the category of Portugal. So we are uh, very grateful for, for everything. And of course, all of you that are attending today, obviously uh, consume our wine. So also a thank you to, to all of you to buying our wines and to taste them every now and then. Uh, hopefully today you'll get another uh, good tasting of, of the wines that we're uh, offering. So we'll have an interesting tasting, I'm sure. Uh, we'll, we'll try and be um, um, you know, quick, but also thorough of, of the presentation. Try to give you a general idea of uh, who we are and what we do. Uh, so we prepared uh, a couple of slides, so give you some uh, visual support while we uh, talk about wines. I, I, I will start with a couple of uh, explanations and then I'll hand it over to, to Sandra, who obviously has the expertise and obviously she is the, the master and the artist behind the wines. So of course she can talk about the wines much better than I. So, so I'll start just saying um, and move on to the second slide about the mission of our company. So basically, uh, the way we, we try to give the message out of what we do is to make the finest products that nature provides in a responsible and inspiring way. So we were very attached to nature and, and we believe that nature is fundamental uh, and we need to preserve it in order to also produce quality wines in a very sustainable manner. So we are quite inspired by it and it's something that's in our DNA. Um, next slide. Um, perspective a geographical perspective of our business units so towards the the left side you have the map of portugal and starting from the south uh which uh gives you an idea of the region of alentejo geographically speaking is the largest area for wine producing in portugal we are located roughly 200 kilometers east of Lisbon, almost on the border with spain uh, the Herda so this is our southern property and it's from here that uh, we are actually uh, showing you the wines that will be for the tasting today. We do have other regions where we produce wine. So we also produce wines in the Douro. Of course, Douro is obviously well known for port, but also for table wine. Uh, we, we went up to the Douro uh, in 2008 
to focus on table wine and not port. So it was kind of an, an interesting adventure. And then more recently, we, we decided to purchase a property in the Vinho Verde region, which is on the north side of Portugal, so northwest uh, of Portugal, also on the border with Spain, with the well-known region of Galicia, who's really good white wines like uh, Alvary. We also have in the north of Portugal um, a restaurant, and we have our craft beer factory. So this gives you an idea of everything that we produce. And we have to add that also we produce olive oil in both Douro and Alentejo. So it's, it's quite, quite a large um, portfolio that we have, but we, we try and cover uh, the best regions in Portugal. We try and do the best wines that we can in, in these three regions that we believe are probably the most important regions in, in the country. Um, we can continue. And the next slide gives you obviously a perspective of two very important people of the company. On the left side, we have our founder, Mr. José Ruquet. Uh, José Ruquet, along with a partner, uh, they purchased the property back in 1973. Uh, and back then, the region of Valentejo was mostly known for cooperative wine, uh, volume wine, not necessarily associated to quality. So at the time, it was quite the project and quite an ambitious uh, investment for, for both and José Roquet and Joaquim Bandeira to go into a region and to focus on quality wine. And so it was quite, quite the struggle at the beginning uh, to try and uh, come out with fantastic wines, which obviously eventually we did with our first vintage, which is dated from 1985. So despite the fact that the property was purchased in 73, we only produced our first wine in 85. And that's mostly to do with the fact that, you know, once you plant a vineyard, you cannot obviously produce a wine immediately. But also, uh, and if, you're, uh, if you know Portuguese history, in 1974, we had the uh, revolution in Portugal. So there was a bit of troubled times back then. And also another reason why we delayed for so long the launch of our first vintage. Uh, as of 1985, things developed uh, quite fast for the company. Uh, we started to increase our portfolio. We started to uh, export our wines to several countries. And eventually, in 2006, uh, José Roquet's youngest son came into play. And so João Roquet, which you can see on the right side, started to manage the, the company in as of 2006. And basically, João brought a little bit more of... Uh, a modern uh, touch to the company. And essentially he brought the concept of sustainability very much into play. So sustainability nowadays is something huge for us. Uh, within the sustainability process, there's many things that you, you can talk about, but maybe the one that's most obvious is obviously organic farming. So in the Alentejo, our vineyards are totally organic now. We have certification as of 2019 for the entire property, which is something huge for us. Uh, we do believe that you know if 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 you have uh, you know healthy organic fruit, you will necessarily can produce better wine. So we are true believers in that. So João João is a big part of that, and of course uh, he is guiding us towards towards that direction. Here we have three more uh, faces. Of course, on the left side. You have Sandra, which is here with us today. Sandra is responsible for winemaking in the southern property of Spurão. In the middle, we have David Baverstock, who uh, has been in the company since 91. Is that correct, Sandra? I believe. Yes, yes, exactly. And Sandra, you are, you are with us since 2000, right? Uh, since two, two thousand and 2001. One, okay, I was, I was wrong for one year, sorry. So the, David now is in a, in a slightly different role, so more uh, culture and education. Uh, and then on the right side, you have José Luis, who is responsible for winemaking in the northern part of our property, so in the Douro and in the Vinho Verde. And maybe now I can pass the, to Sandra, because now we're talking more specifically about the Lentejo, and Sandra can, can take the lead and... Uh, Go for it. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so first of all, thank you, Per, for organizing this. Thank you all for sharing this moment with us. 
Um, yes, your dad is located 170 kilometers from Lisbon, so that means that you need usually around a two hours driving through the countryside, really nice roads until you get you get here. So it's located in uh, Alentejo DOP, Erguengues Monsaraz region, because um, uh, it's a quite big area, uh, Alentejo. Uh, about the climate and about landscape for, for, for Alentejo, I will ask you to think uh, about the climate and landscape where I believe you are now. And uh, so Alentejo, I also believe that it's exactly the opposite because here, we have quite uh, uh, hot and dry summers, and uh, it's it's truly uh, 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 dry even in, in the in the in the winter. So that's why we're talking in the beginning that we are quite happy with this raining that is is, is, is having today and all these last last uh, weeks. Um, one third of Portugal of, of, uh, of Portugal is occupied by Alentejo because it's a quite big area, and uh, that means that uh, you can find a quite different regions between north and south and west and east, and uh, that, that 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 makes Alentejo one region quite. Uh, uh, interesting, quite specific, and quite uh, complete as well. Uh, at the same time, it's a long tradition of wine production. So the first wines that have, has been had been pr produ uh, produced here, uh, uh, it was in the Roman ancient times about 2,000 years ago. So it's a long history already that we have to, to tell you about about this experience. Uh, Pedro, I can't. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so that's Irdach Purão. Irdach Purão, it's uh, with almost eight, eight centuries old and uh, 1,600 hectares. Um, Irdach Purão, in, in fact, offers a unique and very specific agricultural, uh, agricultural conditions because uh, it's such a big area but uh, it's it's not just that it's uh, a different we, uh, we we could found the seven different kinds of soils a huge amount of biodiversity um if you have a look on this green area I, i'm quite sure you can't uh, i can work on this but maybe you can just Focus on this, please. This the, the green area uh, are our vineyards. So where we have uh, around six, uh, five hundred hectares, uh, and uh, some olive trees as well, olive groves, and um, uh, all these. Uh, the blue are our dam that in these days are quite it's, it's filled that we are quite happy with this. And all these uh, uh, brown area uh, are dominated by um, orchids, vegetable forest, uh, uh, cork trees. So it's a huge uh, amount of biodiversity that help us to make our wines in a, in a, in a very specific, in a very unique way as well. Thank you. So this question, uh, why why organic? Because uh, because we believe well first, uh, soil matters, wine root matters as well, and uh, organic uh, farming helps in fact to protect soils, to increase the resilience and the quality of the vineyards. That in the end will produce wines with. Um, greater identity and sense of place. That's what we want, that we are focused on, on it, uh, to show you what we can do at the Dutch Crown in a very unique way that you can have it in some other ways. It doesn't mean that they are you not know, best wines, or but it means that we can just produce it here. And um, organic farming, that's exactly that. You, you need to take care from land. Uh, first thing to take care is biodiversity, is soil, uh, in order to really um, be sure that in the end you have healthy vineyards, healthy soils, 
and of course healthy grapes that makes the, our best wines. Um, we start, yes, in 2009, um, it was the first harvest that we have Herdade Curão with uh, 100% uh, certified organic production. That means that the wines that came from Herdade Curão, uh, uh, since uh, fr from, this, uh, from this day, it will be all certified as organic as well. Thank you. Um, so it's it, this is a, a, some somehow our our path in organic farming. Uh, it, it didn't happen in one day. It was a long process of hard work and respect of nature. Uh, we have some really nice experience, but we also had some really not so good experience. That in the end also help us to learn more about our land and about the organic farming and about what we, the way and that we really want to, to, to go on until these days. So to be true, we start in 2008. Pedro, it happened something, but it doesn't matter. We start in 2008 with a, a, a a small part from our vineyard, and you went through until 2019 when we finally were able to certify um, a hundred percent of the Dutch Brown vineyards. And uh, of course, organic farming goes hand by hand, side by side with. Uh, also with uh, biodiversity uh, here there is I, I love this um, this slide because it shows uh, just a small part of different uh, visions that we can have from our vineyards and from our from our uh, state so just to give you some some, some ideas we have some uh, uh, blackberry bushes uh, some honeysuckles some other plants that uh, are just between lines in the middle of the vineyards and they help us to host auxiliar insects. We have some uh, mulching in this first from, from your our left hand side uh, that helps to provide to increase the fertility in soils. We have these um, the beds that live in shelters. Um, built for, for them just on purpose to, to help uh, to, 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 um, to fix these beds that uh, eat the insects that in some, some, sometimes goes through our vineyards and they are not, not good for, for sure. Um, some other microorganisms that are essential to, to, to um, decompose organic matter in soils also uh, it's, 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 it's a issue. And of course, the grazing some sheep that helps uh, to eat some spontaneous uh, vegetation and uh, goes through the vineyards in a very natural way. So of course, fox can go um, in freedom through the vineyard, and it's always very nice to, to see them just uh, feeling free in our in our lands. Uh, that's our wineries. So it's also important because we are very focused on vineyards and having uh, healthy grapes, uh, high quality. Um, grapes to go through the wine, through the wines, but of course, for that, we also need a nice and very well adequate uh, wineries. So we have three wineries, one for, one for whites and two for reds that we can see here. And of course, in the, um, our barrels that uh, to, to, to this, this, um, this um, um, place, has had been built has been building in 2000 in 1987, just in the first part in the first winery that we we had in the large ground, and then uh, we have uh, our Dega de Lagarde and the Dega Montevallo. 
um, very with a very nice equipment that help us to make the, 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 the wines as well. Um, you, you know, it's, uh, we have uh, like 23 different white grape varieties at Chipurão. Um, we have here Rinto, Novaj, Ropeiro. So mostly they are Portuguese grape varieties, but we, have, uh, we, we also have some uh, really nice experience with some French grape varieties as Mion. We love working with blends. I love working with blends. Uh, I believe that uh, different grapes brings different characteristics to the wine and uh, help us to make also um, more interesting and more uh, great wines that represents really nicely Alentejo and Portugal. And for reds, we have uh, 70 different grape varieties in our, in our vineyards. So you can imagine to manage all of these, it's quite interesting. Uh, the most important, uh, of course, Aragonese, it's really the, the, the around 30% uh, is, is Aragonese, but also Alicante Bouchet, French grape variety that grows really nicely here in Alentejo, Toriga Franca, Toriga Nacional, Trincadeira, uh, but also Tinta Caiada, Moreto, and I can go through all these uh, ex exquisite names that uh, I hope uh, you, well, at least try to say it. Okay. And that's it. We, we all already go through wines. Claire, yeah, that, unless, unless you want us to, <laughs> to continue with, I guess, uh, I, I and Claire, correct me if I'm wrong, the idea is for us to taste, but also for people to ask questions and Absolutely. make comments if they want, right? So everyone is, most. I think nearly everyone here tonight has been to one of our tastings before. So, you know, if you have any questions, just use the chat function and I will, I will pose them for you. Um, but everyone should have a glass poured. I'm sure you've already had some already. <laughs> Yes, please. If, if someone has some questions, my English is not uh, uh, amazing. I hope everyone could understand me, but just feel free to ask and to, I, will, I will love it to answer. Your, uh, your English is a lot better than my Portuguese, that's for sure. Uh, it's always. Especially the pronunciation <laughs> is, is so tricky, I find, in Portuguese. Uh, so it's really helpful to have you say the words properly. Because when we have to say them to customers, it can be tricky to get it right, you know. Yeah. So, duas castas. Uh, I, I believe that, well, I have here mine. And I will have some wine as well, just to be more inspired. Uh, anyway, duas castas, it's, it's always a challenge for us. Because uh, um, as we have these 23 different grape varieties, so the challenge that we, we, we introduced ourselves is just uh, year after year choose the two best ones that in some way, somehow they both go best together. And so that's why in 2019 we chose uh, Arinto and Anton Arinto for the acidity, Anton Vaz for this uh, grape fruity and for this creamy in mouth feeling. Um, so it is a wine that goes uh, uh, fermenting through, through stainless steel uh, tanks and then we leave it with leaves, with fine leaves for a couple of months just to embrace this creamy, this mouth feeling. So it's a quite gastronomic wine. And um, And the idea is also uh, 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 to create an opportunity to, to talk a little bit about different grape varieties that we have in our vineyards and to explain you a little bit difference between and what, what each one brings to our wines. So uh, what, what's, uh, someone, Timothy, has asked how you decide which percentage of each grape variety to put in. Um, but also, I would like to know, at what stage do you choose which grapes are going to go into the Juris Castus that year? Because every year you choose two different grapes, don't you? So is it 
when the grapes are being harvested or is it when they are going to fruit? What, what, what makes the decision for you? Okay. okay, I think, well, the process starts a little bit early, uh, already in the vineyard when, during maturation time. So, uh, well, since uh, July, when we, we start to have our first, um, um, our, our first maturations going through, so we go a lot to the vineyard. So the first step is, you know, just to understand which one go, going is better. But of course, the, the, the final decision is, or uh, is when the grapes are arriving to, to the winery and we start to vinificate and start to fermenting and start to understand uh, which is the characteristics this year, how it goes through this, this variety for different years. And um, in the end, um, after when, when fermentation is, is finishing, we decide, okay, this is exactly what we are looking for. Of course, sometimes we need to make some trials because I can see, okay, I think it goes really nicely this year with some uh, views in you, but uh, I can just make the blend and not so good. So it's a kind of experience in the winery as well. So it's quite um, exciting. I remember when I came to, to visit, uh, you have in the lab room every day have samples of every wine, tongue samples of maybe 30 wines, don't you, or 50 wines. So is it at that point when you're trying all the wines, okay, maybe this isn't going to work so well, we'll choose something else, or maybe some more of that? Yeah, well, usually when we try a wine, well, first step, we can imagine uh, how, how it will work. Uh, you know, I just can imagine, so then, then I can make some trials, well, okay, maybe 40% uh, of our and 60% of the vintage, or 50-50, or no, and make some trials until I get, no, it's exactly that what we are looking for. Um, because this isn't the same tasting wine every year. It's not like most wines where you want a consistent style. No, it has a, a sense, but not the same. It's, a, it's an experience. I, 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 I think is a, uh, I like to think in this wine like an experienced wine when we can just try year after year. And sometimes you can have a really a more elegant and more um, a, a, a kind of citric wine. And some years it can be more creamy and mouth feeling and more intense. Um, so, but that's the idea, you know, because great, different grapes makes different wines and different years also makes different wines. So it's always something that uh, we, we hope you are curious to, to know, okay, what's going on this year? What are these people thinking about? Uh, what's everyone thinking? Anyone uh, want to give their thoughts on the wine? I think it's... Uh, really was so fresh and clean it's got a really lovely uh texture to it. it's got a good mouthfeel even though it's very kind of light it's got some really lovely aromatics in there as well yes and i also think that it's quite fresh super but fresh at time, but at the same time it's quite um intense it's quite long quite quite persistent and it's also quite gastronomic, you know, you can have it you not know, like in a picnic or in a, in, a, in a swimming pool, just having a, a relaxing time, but you also have with some fish or with some, some, some salad or some, um, some, something to go with in, in, the, in your table or even with some cheese, not a yeah. very strong cheese, it can go really nicely. Got that really kind of zesty grapefruity note to it that could be good with a salty cheese. Yeah, I see what you mean actually. Mm. Nick says he thinks it's really food friendly. He's actually opened his a couple of days ago. <laughs> says it's still drinking brilliantly, so excellent. <laughs> That's always a sign of a good wine. If the flavor's gone the next day, then uh, it's generally not going to be great. Mmm. Anyone else? Richard, what are you thinking? No uh, extremely good fruit, it's well balanced, it's fresh, it's citrusy, it's just refreshing, easy drinking. It's got, you know, considering how warm the climate is in Alentejo, it's amazing the acidity is up where it is. So it's very fresh for a warm climate white. Right? 
you know, it's not the right climate for a white wine. Um, it, you know, uh, Simon, uh, what what I what I learned in all these years in the Lentejo wine region is well that that's true. It's it's warm and it's some some years can be quite hard. But uh, well, two things first. We have a really warm um, temperature during the day, but at night can go uh, quite fresh. Sometimes we have like 20 to 25 difference, uh, temperature difference between day and night. We can have like 35 uh, during 35, 38 during day, but in the night, at night can go through like 18. So it's amazing and it's very important for vineyard because vineyard can just stop and can start to work again and making maturations, proper maturations in grape. Uh, the other thing is that we have a, 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 a huge amount of different grape varieties and some of them are really well adapted to our climate. Uh, that's this is good ex examples like a Rinton and Auvage that goes nicely and can go through this uh, more extreme uh, 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 kind of climate. It's, it's worth mentioning possibly um, that Portuguese grape varieties, like you said, they're really adapted to this environment. In fact, lots of countries that are experiencing climate change and their grapes don't grow so well in the climate are now moving towards Portuguese varieties, aren't they? Because they can take the heat like that. Uh, and it might also be a really good chance, Sandra, for you to talk about the only galactic field that you have, which is an amazing thing in the winery. I think I passed through this. I did? Uh, yes, it's all ampelographic. You mean the ampelographic field, right, Claire? Ampelographic field, yeah. yeah. Your wine library. Uh, the price is eleven ninety nine, guys. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, yes, we have an ampelographic field that it's that, that there, there is a diff, um, different um, uh, experience with, with this. So it's like 10 hectares with 189 different grape varieties. Most part of them are uh, Portuguese grape varieties, some uh, old, quite old, that are almost extinct. So we have. Um, uh, different objectives with, with this, different goals for this. It's like, first we want, of course, uh, preserve the, 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 the grape, the Portuguese grape varieties, all Portuguese grape varieties. And then that's also uh, uh, to make some trials and some experience that we are doing year after year. Uh, to, to, to go through hydric stress, thermal stress. Um, I don't know if it is in English, but it's like physi physiologic stress. It's like when, when, when you uh, have a really good yield and how it goes through these different um, years and different uh, uh, temperatures that we have. At the same time, we want just to compare different uh, um, uh, ways, uh, different uh, um, farming ways. So what goes better if it is uh, organic or if it is uh, um, uh, biodynamic or uh, conventional. So we can also try all these different, uh, different ways. And um, for the other hand, we can also, we are also, uh, uh, studying different resistance to, to um, uh, insects and uh, disease in vineyards. So we have a good, uh, now we, we can have, we almost identified uh, uh, a bunch of grapes that goes better than the others. And of course, in the end, just see if they are really nice to make proper wines and just identify the really quality grapes for, for, for wines. So it's um, a quite uh, incredible experience, not just for, for us as, as, as winemakers or as the, in agriculture uh, 
part, but uh, um, I think it's it's also important for all region, for all countries, who knows for for, for country, for for um, uh, for, for uh, uh, international um, world of, of wines and, and uh, vineyards, because in the end, that's it. That's always a, a, a proper grape for the different climates, different soils, different farming. And we need just also to study, to identify, and to make sure that they will survive in the, in the future. But uh, if you ever get the chance to go, it's amazing seeing these 189 different grape varieties and you can go and pick them, you know, and try them. It's uh, it's really amazing. 10 hectares. So that's, that means that we can do like, well, if it goes in, in a good production, we can go through 200 liters, two to 300 liters per, per, per variety. So it's... A good volume to, to to study and to make experience, to analyze, to taste, to keep in for, for the future. You must be one of the few winemakers in the world who has that. No, I, I've yeah. never heard of it before. There, there is some, some some more, but not as big as ours. Not with so many great varieties, with so many areas. Well, excellent. Thank you. Yep. So we should go to our Sprung Reserve? Mm hmm Yep. So this one is, uh, this wine is $14.99 and you guys have got the last of this vintage. So this is the 2018 vintage. Uh, and the 2019 vintage arrived in the country today. So we will have it in stock tomorrow, Monday. Okay. But you, everyone, uh, I, I, that everyone is tasting this wine as well. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So, um, Sprung Spr Reserve is is our uh, is a, is a classic. So, uh, it was our first wine to produce it in a Sprung State. First um, uh, vintage was in. 1985, even before we have the winery, we already did to uh, make one, this wine. And um, it's a classic that shows, that shows, uh, that represents the uh, Crown State. Um, all the grapes, of course, grows in the Irdach Crown, in our vineyards. Um, and shows the, the richness and the typicity from uh, not just from Irdach Pural, from, uh, from, from Alentejo, but mostly from Irdach Pural, uh, from, our, from our lands, from our soils, from our grape varieties as well. So we work with Arinto, Anton Vaz, and Roupeiro mostly. Then we have like five percent of different others but these three are the most important ones adding to for the acidity for sure and uh, the wash for mouth feeling for the creamy in the in the in the mouth feeling and ropeir also because it creates some 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 texture some creaminess but it's a very aromatic that uh, that that, uh, that when he's young it's very aromatic it's very fresh when it goes through um, through, through maturation, develops this kind of almost minerality that we, you can find in this wine. So here we use uh, thirty percent of this wine is fermented in uh, uh, in oak barrels, like thirty percent, like forty percent American and sixty percent uh, French barrels, and. Um, the other part is fermented in stainless steel tanks. It stays for six months, and after six this, uh, six months, we blend these two parts. So here, the goal is really goes to a wine for one side, at this really crispy, uh, clean, uh, uh, very intense um, uh, aromas of uh, some some white fruit aromas. But uh, at the same time, you can find this uh, uh, spiciness, this toasty, um, 
and, uh, and, and, and in the mouth feeling is also more intense, it's more uh, gastronomic even than the, the previous one. I love the spiciness of it, but there's so much else going on, isn't there? It's really lovely and complex. Yeah, some, some, some white pepper as well. Some um, herbal notes that um, increase the complexity from the wine. And um, in mouth feeling, it's quite um, intense, but at the same time, it's elegant and it's like just stays for long and long in your mouth. It's a very, uh, a very grown up wine, if you know what I mean, for a white wine. It's really complex and delicious. And funnily enough, I've been to, this is the wine that I've seen in most places around the world. So I've seen this wine in a shop in New York, I've seen it in a shop in, um, the Netherlands, I've seen it in a shop in France. It seems wherever I go when I'm traveling, I see this wine. So it, it clearly do it pretty well and it gets a lot, gets to a lot of places, huh? Yeah, it's a wine that's extremely well received all over the world. I think it's such a friendly wine. I think it, it uh, attracts the, the, the palate of all types of consumers because it's such a versatile wine. So it's, it's a really appealing, like, you know, like we've been talking and it's not only versatile in terms of taste, but I think it's also extremely versatile when you want to pair with, yeah. with food because you can do so much with this wine. Um, There's so many things so, to pick out, isn't it? Like yeah. I said, you've got the spiciness and the creaminess and all of those things would match with loads of things. Yeah. And you can even go, of course, probably the obvious thing would be like baked fish or seafood risotto, but you can also go towards poultry, like uh, oven roasted chicken, uh, even pork dish could, could obviously be a good pairing. So there's a wide range of dishes that you can use this wine. And ultimately, it's it's a crowd pleaser. It's it's rare that, you know, when we try and pair this wine with all types of food that's rare, we, we don't find people that don't, you know, like the, the, the pairing or, or obviously the wine. So like you said, it's that's why you see it in so many places. Uh, and, and usually it's, uh, and you, you mentioned Holland, for instance. Yeah. And, in Holland, this wine is actually the number one wine for us in value, but also in volume, which is quite quite amazing because it's in the super premium category. Usually in volume, you have the lower end wines that are the best sellers, but in Holland, no, this is the best seller. So it's quite incredible. Mm. Yeah, no, no. And, it was, and it was a different vintage than we had at work at the time. So it's great to go back and try the previous vintage, it was nice. In fact, John Best, who is here somewhere tonight, he's got a few, a couple of back vintages of this wine, haven't you, John? I can't see you're not on my screen, but I know you do, unless you've drunk them already. Hi. Um, just to... Yes, just to, He does. John. And just so for those of you who are not, uh, maybe, I, I'm sure you listen, but if in case you didn't listen to the situation on the label, and so you don't get confused on future vintages. We change the label every single year for the white and the red. Uh, and so the wine was ob obviously will be the same. The bottom part of the wine is the same, but the top part will be a different piece of art. Um, we've always had Portuguese artists decorate the labels. And actually for the first time for the next vintage of the white, which will be the 2019, which basically is marking two different things. Number one is we have a Dutch artist for the first time. And number two, it's the first time that the wine has this certification for organic. So look out also for the 2019 wine. That'll be I've seen a... the label. Well, it'll be here on Monday, I think. So, but yeah, so nice. these two labels are the same for the red and the white, but they're a vintage apart. So the 18 and, and 17, because obviously the wine is released later. So yeah. that's so why we, the year's yeah, on so the we same. Have a match. They, yeah, the year of release rather than the vintage will be the, will have the same label. What does everyone think of the reserve whites? So that one is a uh, thumbs up, everyone. Uh, that one is $14.99. Um, and I have, I will remind you at the end, but I put up a code. So everyone is here tonight. The the face, the code for the website to get 10% off is Zoom All Capitals. And that will get you 10% off all the Eschbrow wines, the Pay wines, the Monteveo wines. And I believe if I'm right, Richard, we have a new wine coming in as well from the Douro from Eschbrow. So. They will be here on Monday, so I've extended the code to the 8th of March. Um, so you can use that, but you can also just ring us in the office, obviously. Uh, Paul said, um, no, sorry, I've got a couple of comments here. 
So I've got, um, as long as there's, the reserve really improves with age, how long do you think this stuff will develop? Sandra? Yeah, well, um, I, 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 can, I can say that, that uh, for sure that goes really, you no, know, it will be amazing in the next uh, five years at least. But uh, um, after that, uh, we'll start to develop this material in, in bottle, but I still love it. We'll be different. We'll ask for some different moments, different food, but still um, quite nice. Well, I, 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 you know, it's always a surprise. It's even a surprise for me when I taste some uh, white uh, uh, um, Sprung Reserve from uh, early 90s and still are quite nice, are quite interesting. You always can find some fresh and some, some uh, um, uh, complexity, some spiciness. So, you know, for sure, next five years will be just lovely and we'll increase a lot. Um, more than this, we'll develop different, um, different characteristics that we'll be still okay. delicious experience yeah there's a lot of love coming in for the oak in the wine uh, paul says it's been fashionable to apologize for oak aging of white but the oak aging is key to this wine's fabulous and nick says apologies for gratuitous aging are necessary so lots and lots of lovely compliments <laughs> and, and claire we've and just to support what right. Sandra was saying we've, we've had quite amazing uh, uh examples of the reserve white and we've gone back even more than five years and of course, it's a question of you picking a, a good year. And a good year for us in Alentejo would obviously be, would be a, a year where, you know, there's a milder summer that allows to have more acidity on the wine. So we've had some interesting, very interesting examples where we've gone maybe even 10 years back and we had some really interesting surprises with the uh, Spinot White, which is like Richard, who I just uh, realized that it's not Simon, is actually Richard. Simon went in and changed I it. Knew, I knew Simon I knew that grow. guy. I knew I knew that guy, but Simon wasn't really ringing a bell, but hi, Richard, nice to see you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so we've had some, some quite astonishing, uh, great, great wines. And even you, you can even go and send it if she's going to back me up for sure, but we've even tasted, even when you go down to Montevallo range, and you can taste Montevallo with, with three, four, five years and pretty outstanding. Uh, and more outstanding and more surprising is what Richard said. It's from such a hot region, but you know, for, for all the combination of everything that we have at the property, the soil and the, the mostly the varietals that are adaptable to our heat, you can really find some really interesting surprises. Yeah. Excellent. It's a long, long time experience. It uh, you know, the, the proper grape varieties, the, the proper and working soils and working biodiversity. So I also believe that we are no, in, in, the, in the right way because we, we can, we already identify this. Of course, we, we have a lot to learn and we'll be along, we'll be uh, learning for, for a lifetime. Uh, but still, um, I think we, with proper uh, conditions and knowledge, we can go and we can have a really great uh, uh, white wines, as much as, as reds. Excellent. Speaking of reds, uh, would you like to move on to the to final one? Fine, I already have got this here. Ta -da. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Um, I don't know if everyone saw in the pictures as well, but either Sandra or um, Pedro, a lot of people haven't seen the tulips before, you know, the cement tulips um, in the winery, which I got to see when we came to visit. Uh, they really are amazing in terms yeah. of they have a very different impact on the winemaking compared to steel tanks or oak. Um. Yeah, so one, once again, for this wine, you know, it's, it's, uh, as the white is uh, our our first our first wine made by Sprung in 1985 was Sprung Reserve White and Red. So for for Red we use um, uh, mostly Aragonese, Trincadeira, some Cabernet Sauvignon that has been planted early in in, in the in 70s, um, and some Lincoln Pichet that grows really nice as well at the Landejo wine region. 
So we, we use this um, um, cement tanks. We use different uh, kind of different uh, vinification, different uh, um, uh, ways to vinify this wine. So a part goes through uh, uh, cement tanks, another part goes through small open tanks, small open marble tanks. And um, there's another part, that's a, a tiny part that goes, goes through stainless steel uh, tanks that just to improve the, the, the fruit at the primary aromas from fruity. And after that, all these wines goes to uh, oak barrels not new oak barrels as for white, always use it oak barrels uh, with two, three, four, and five years. And um, stays for at least eight to 10 to 12 months in, uh, in, in, oak, uh, in oak, just to no, uh, go to a, a nice maturation and a nice, uh, um, roundness and micro oxygenation that as someone was saying here just improves in a very specific way the wines um, and that's it so i think it's a very complex wine that shows exactly what's going on at Herdade Purão in Alentejo in Portugal so all these uh, some blackberries and berries some uh, uh, black pepper, some um, some chocolate, some coffee, and I can say, you know, Pedro, can you help me? Like some crevinho? <laughs> <No>? <laughs> um, I, I don't know how to say crevinho in English. It's just just that our questions. You know everything. <laughs> Let me try and see if I can Google yeah, it. Yeah, Google Translate. <laughs> That's what it's there for, huh? No, but it's a kind of a spicy that is uh, at the same time there is a slightly sweet in nose, but at the same yeah. time there is some, 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 some herbal notes uh, that embrace all these complex That's a good word. Yeah. Clove. Cloves. Cloves, yeah. Very, yeah. very much like a sweet spice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Nick Rowan says a garrigi kind of smell, like a herby, wild, which is very true. I get a lot of that as well. Yeah. There's so much going on here. Loads of dark fruits and mm. spice. A little bit olivey as well, I find. And in mouth feeling, of course, it's quite intense, quite dense. And it's, it is at the same time, you can feel the tannic part, but it's not, um, it's well integrated with, 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 with fruit and uh, with this um, uh, really good uh, red fruit, a really nice maturation uh, with some uh, nice density. And um, of course, it's from 2017, but I believe that this can go through next 10 years you know, yeah. peacefully. It's, uh, it's, but it will, it will, have, it will developed into something different, of course. And I, I think that now it's probably showing a lot of intense, vibrant great. fruit notes. And eventually that fruit complexity maybe will, will be replaced by secondary notes, maybe more forest notes, maybe more of those mushroom notes, the tobacco notes will come into play. So it, it, that's why it's important to buy at least a case. So you can, you can have the wine with fruit and then experience it later on. So... <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> uh, so for those that didn't catch the price, this is seventeen ninety nine. Um, yeah, Portuguese wines always offer such amazing value for money, uh, especially the Esperal wines. Always, time after time, I think that they sell they sell themselves in terms of the price point because they're such good. Uh, a wine of that quality for under twenty pounds is uh, is fantastic. <laughs> He's asking for food because he's quite young, so yeah. I feel like then he's asking for some meat, some something more, uh, some protein that goes with this this tannic. Uh, some very good charcuterie, I think, would be really good with that. Something salty and fatty, and yeah, yeah. There's a local charcuterie place to us that does a, a truffle and porcini salami. It's really dark. That would be excellent with that. I think. <laughs> 
it's, 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 um, uh, but know, when you I make the it. one, you have the marble open fermenters, don't you? In the in the winery picture, I didn't get a chance to do it when I came to visit you, but I know that you do still do the pierage. Is that do you still do that? Yes, we do. We so some... every year. Yeah, uh, with some specific um, blocks in, in our vineyard because in all this uh, around 500 uh, hectares, so with such a different uh, uh, diversity of grape varieties and soils, so we and different um, ages for the vineyards as well. So we already identify you know, exactly the most important blocks for different brands. And of course, Brown Reserve, it's our, um, you know, like our prima donna, as you can say. So it's very important. And it's, uh, so um, usually we have a really nice Aragonese that is Sema Stempranillo, as someone were asking here. Uh, some good um, Aragonese that we usually ferment in this open marble uh, tanks that we call lagares, that's the Portuguese word for this, and also really nice Toriga Frank, Toriga Trincadeira, sorry, Trincadeira, that can post nicely as well, because it's a quite old uh, block. Um, and then we have some of the Morion that we ferment in the assignment tanks, as well as Cabernet. So it depends, different blocks, different grape varieties goes to three different materials and different uh, um, kinds of fermentation, vinification. It's so to, to just to get the proper potential and don't lose anything that came from the vineyard. And you have to wear a special harness when you're doing the, the PR to press it with your feet. Uh, sorry? When you do their pierage, when people do with their feet, do you have to wear like a special no. harness? No. You just get in there. <laughs> you dive in head first. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, you don't dive in. <laughs> no, it's you, you, you barefoot, shorts and a t shirt. That's it. Shorts and a t shirt. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And lots of water and to, <laughs> to wash. Yeah, I'm sure, it's lots of fun. Yeah. Um, would you mind, Pedro, when I was there also, I remember we went to the fortress, just tell a little bit of the history, you remember you, um, about the archaeology and stuff that you have in the fortress. Yeah, so, a little bit on that. Yeah, so the area where Herdade de is located, it's actually a quite a, an historical region. Um, and we actually found out almost by mistake uh, we were uh, ex excavating to renovate part of a vineyard on one of our properties called Herdade dos Perdigões. And at a certain point, the excavation workers started to find some um, just strange artifacts uh, within the, 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 the property. And immediately we stopped the renovations. We called the archaeological government team to come in and to understand and to study these artifacts. And at they reached the conclusion that some of these artifacts were dated from the fourth uh, century before Jesus Christ. So um, qu quite an astonishing find. And, and it, was, it went to such a point that we had to seclude quite a large area of the property in order for them to continue excavating and to try and find more and more um, artifacts. And so it, it was quite uh, the find and we reached some interesting conclusions about the time. We found things like, uh, there was a very symbolic artifact, which was a, a bunny made of ivory. And that was kind of strange because ivory is something that you could not find in the Iberian Peninsula. So we came to the conclusion this ivory was part of some commerce exchange from people that would come from Africa. And that would be a meeting point for some uh, commercial exchanges. So that was quite one of the most, probably most uh, uh, iconic finding that uh, was discovered and now what we have is in our property we actually have a museum of most of the artifacts that we found so hopefully when when all of this ends you can come and visit us and you can also visit the museum 
uh, and see all of the uh, the artifacts that we have collected throughout the years, which is quite quite an, uh, an amazing. Uh, I would uh, I'd highly see. recommend the, a visit. The winery is beautiful. The wines are obviously excellent. The restaurant is brilliant, and uh, yeah, it's such a fascinating place to go and go and see. It's definitely one I'd recommend. Yeah, and the definitely. towns close by as well are really really wonderful. Yeah, Any but don't, more don't, get, don't huh? get me wrong, but these our, our wines also taste great in in Scotland, so. <laughs> uh, if you can't come, you know, we'll, we'll take the wines there and hopefully we can come and visit. I remember doing a wine dinner with, with, with you guys in Edinburgh. Yeah. About three years ago? Three, four years ago. Yeah, yeah. And we had such good, good fun. It was such an amazing event. So hopefully we can also do that very soon. Absolutely. So we, we can bring a Lentejo to Edinburgh. So hopefully. We would like that very, very much. Uh, one day. So just 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 to uh, uh, um, this wine maturation for, 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 for this wine is, is done in this um, in this cellar with this, all these barrels. Um, we have like 2,000 um, oak barrels over here in your uh, left hand side in the bottom. And um, it was one of the first parts that have, has been building at, at, sta at the Large Brown State in uh, 87. It's an amazing place because it's like really nice temperature during all the year, like 70 degrees, really quite nice humidity. So it's just the, the perfect place to storage our wines to, to bef before being bottled. We can do. We can set up a table here and uh, do a dinner also, and we oh, can okay. take the wine directly from the barrel. So <laughs> make it more. Does anyone uh, <laughs> have any more questions for Sandra or Pedro, or about the wines before we uh, let them go and enjoy the rest of the evening? I never realized before I visited Portugal as well that uh, they have the same time as us, which makes everything so much easier. <laughs> yeah. I really like that. <laughs> Can I just say, um, if anybody has any problems pronouncing any of the words, just just put on your best Sean Connery accent. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if, if you do have any problems, just just say Lagarge. So, <laughs> la, la, Lagarge in French is Lagarge in Portuguese. Drunk, so, Sean, Connery. Sean Connery, yeah. After, after a martini or two. And then my, my other little thing was... Uh, if I can get this in front of the camera. There you go. This this is a glass I picked up. Oh, beautiful! So, this this is a plastic oh. glass from a huge picnic at the estate uh, a year and a bit ago, the last time that I was there, and it was a fantastic experience. So, uh, so yeah, it's a pl plastic glasses are not the absolute best thing to drink Ash Brown wine from, but but they are indestructible, which which is. Uh, testified by the fact that I've still got it and I brought it back from Portugal. But there you go. They also have the best corkscrews. You have the best corkscrews that are very much... Um, you need, you need good, good corkscrews to open good bottles of wine, so... That's true. And we didn't actually... We haven't talked much about the cork, my goodness, which grows all around the region. And uh, before we finish up, I just want to mention a, a really lovely story that you told me when I came to visit is uh, it's, you know, fairly flat and dry, the land, but everywhere there's these huge boulders. And, uh, and you told me that you were going to remove the boulders when you first had the winery. But in fact, the locals told you, no, 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 you cannot do that. Because if you take the, the, the folklore around there is that if you take the boulders out, then it will suck the world into it and then everything will disappear. But is that yeah, that was, that was part that of the, yeah, that was part of uh, that boulder was one of the white reserve, yeah. maybe three vintages ago. Yeah, so that's the local theory. If if we take the boulder away, you know, all of this will cease to exist. The world ends. <laughs> On that cheery. So we, we haven't tried. We keep we we didn't touch the boulder. It's still there. So just in case. In case, in, in case it's, it's better not. Just, just, yeah, yeah, just leave it. It's always uh, okay. Oh, thank you so much, Sandra and Pedro, for taking the time to share the wines with us this evening. Um, as I mentioned before, so it's 11.99 for the Jewish Custers 2019.
$14.99 for the reserve white, but now that's all finished. So we're going to be moving on to the 2019 vintage for the exciting new label, which is also going to be organic, $14.99 and $17.99 for the red. Um, I have set up a code to use, as I mentioned online, it's just Zoom, all capital letters. However, because the stock's not going to be here probably till Monday, I've extended it to the 4th of March. So um, any problems, please call me at the warehouse. But thank you so much, Pedra and Sandra. The wines have been fantastic, have, as have you. Um, we look forward to meeting you in person again. <laughs> Hopefully. Thanks, We're looking forward to that. Very much so. Thank Cheers. you all. Cheers. Thanks for thank you. Have a nice yeah. evening. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Oh, lots of lovely comments from everyone.